Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I thought it would be really sweet just to encourage you, one, maybe if you haven't started Advent with your children and you're just thinking about ways that you can have an intentional Christmas with your kids. So it's not too late. You don't have to do Advent. There are just many things that we can do to create a special season during this time. I hope that everybody who sees this can be encouraged, but ultimately I'm speaking to believers. Anytime I open my mouth, I pray that it will always be from a biblical worldview, that it would be encouraging, edifying, <coughs> and also just <coughs> pointing people towards Christ and towards the truth and towards his word. On the topic of having intention with our children through these holiday seasons, I thought we would start first and foremost with the reason. It is our job to point our children towards his word and then also just share a life where we are modeling this for our kids. Um, one, just make a point to share the Christmas story with your children, to share with them why we are doing this and make sure that you're following through that that reason in everything you do when you're making cookies when you are singing songs the christmas movies you're watching are they breathing life into your children or breathing falsehood second i think this leads into the making um which is, or i guess my word would be make you can use this season as a time to make with your family making memories, making traditions, flat out making cookies, making an intentional effort to put the phones away and get face to face with your husband, with your kids and love each other well. This is a joyous season. We should be celebrating. We should be mindful that this is what we're living for. Had Christ not come, we would be paying the penalty for our sin. Had Christ not graciously been obedient to the will of God in being made man, leaving his heavenly riches and heavenly splendor to come down to this broken world, to walk alive in human form, had he not chosen to do that, there is truly nothing to celebrate. Christmas is of no value it means nothing it brings no hope no joy our hope is only in our savior and that he chose to do this for us not of anything we deserve it was a gracious and free merciful gift that he gave and so again we have so much to celebrate why would we not make everything we do revolve around that all that to our children and then thirdly in all of these making opportunities, this should naturally flow into the giving. So when we are making gifts, making baked goods, naturally, I think our heart should have a desire to give. Who can I bless this with? Who can I give this to? And training up our children that we, are, as what God's word says, this is more blessed to give than to receive. We have to be modeling that for our children. We rejoice at the blessing of gift receiving. But we also want to be mindful of ways that we can train up our children to delight in giving. I think it would be really precious if you created a opportunity to, for baking, for um, clay making, making clay ornaments, making, uh, running to the dollar store and giving your kids $5, $10 so they can make gifts for the grandparents, for cousins, and then for creating for them a gift basket with bags of cellophane so they can make um make these gifts themselves and then maybe pairing that along with certain books like little house on the prairie um finding i actually on instagram i can share a list of different christmas books that speak into the giving aspect that's making garlands and allowing your children to decorate or feed the birds or decorate their grandparents tree outside i mean there's so many things that we can be doing they will add at the end 
of this, I will be sharing how I put together a really inexpensive little gingerbread themed, you know, gingerbread house building competition. It was very minimal, very small. My parents ended up getting sick. My brothers had gone on a hunting trip. They were exhausted. I will share that with you. Just another, that's another tradition um, that really brings family and time together, intentionality into our kids because we are competing together. Uh, we are, you see each and every one's personality come out, which is really good for us as parents. Uh, seeing each of our child's personalities and ways we can feed them. I have a daughter who loves to decorate, and so she found much joy in decorating her gingerbread house. And then I have another one who could care less. She had fun, but she was more um, content with allowing her dad to make it. And then I have another son who all he cared about was the sweets. And so he was happy to be at the gingerbread building so he could be at the taste tester. <laughs> and so anyways, it's just some precious, it's precious things like this that if we are um, intentional, we can focus in and hone in on some of the traits and skills and abilities God has blessed our children with. And then as a husband or wife, set aside time to pray and um, think over ways that you can be building up your children in the gifts that God gives them. Our fourth thing would be just to speak truth constantly about all things. And so I think this is really important for us as believers and just really prayerfully thinking through, um, like, <laughs> we have Santa bugs, but we do not share Santa with the kids. There is nothing that will remove um, the holiness and the beauty and the freedom that has come because Christ came. There's nothing that's going to steal that spotlight from Christ. And so um, we enjoy decorating. We enjoy watching maybe like the Santa Claus. But even still, we must be always mindful if at any time this looks like it might steal um, a sort of truth from why we celebrate, then it doesn't need to be in our celebration. We constantly talk like the girls don't believe in Santa, so we don't allow that lie to ever be allowed to fester. So we want to bring our children up in a home that is built on truth, beauty, and goodness. And I'm not saying that you can't watch a video about Santa, for example, I mean, I don't, personally think there's anything wrong as long as your children are equipped with the truth our job to protect their little minds to protect their little hearts that is why it is so important that we train them up with truth beauty and goodness so they can spot lies from the enemy so i didn't necessarily give ideas on ways that you could have an intentional christmas i think it is really special when we take time ourselves to intentionally think through ways that we want to cultivate family time with our kids rather than um, always being fed what we should do with our kids take the time be mindful of your children's ages be mindful test things out if you can see like uh every time it's time to do this specific tradition or the specific thing and there's really no joy for the family maybe that's a good um sign to just ditch that and try for something else and so i didn't really want to give a list of things that you can do but more so put that in your hands and allow your, yourself to just be mindful, to sit down, to think through, grab some pen and paper, grab your husband, be prayerful, and think about your kids and create a time that will really bless them, that will really bless your husband and even grandparents and siblings that might come around um, during this time. And allow your kids to have all the freedom in the making of these memories with you don't um, don't squander the joy because you think it has to be perfect. 
but fill them up allow them to to mingle in they are persons just like you and they have a set of skills that god has already graciously blessed them with let them serve let them make let them create let them have a voice in what is going to happen this season and so I hope this was helpful. I would love it if you followed me over on Instagram at Our Ministry the Home. And I will hope to see you in my next video. I thought I would bring you along and give you just briefly and quickly how I'm going to set about creating just um, a little spread for our competition for people to grab from. But I put a show on for my son, so you might hear that in the background. But I'm gonna start just by briefly cleaning up the house. We've been at church and so the house isn't really, doesn't need much, but I'm gonna light a candle. I'm gonna try to appease the five senses for the family as they come. And so I'm going to light a candle. I have a scent of just like pine Christmas I'm gonna put on, which is one of my favorites. I am going to play like some Christmas music, which my family might not love, but we'll have a little bit of that going. I am going to also have drinks and food, and so I had to turn on my espresso machine, so there's an option for coffee. I might make some hot chocolate. I also am thinking of making chili, and I'm going to have crackers and Fritos and cheese so we can have like a Frito pie or chili uh, just as it is. And then also uh, just for comfortability, the couches, blankets, I have a few throws set out. So, and that again just is an easy way to make your guests feel comfortable. You're wanting to appease the five senses and I believe I heard it from... Uh, the Wilson sisters. So Douglas Wilson, I think uh, Rebecca Merkel, Rachel Jankovic. So they're some of my favorite ladies to listen to, what have you, on pod, on list. I listen to their podcasts, and so that's a free tip. They're wonderful to listen to. So is their mother, Nancy Wilson, and their dad, Blog and May Blog, at Douglas Wilson, are just some of my favorite podcasts to listen to. But I'm going to get started. I'm going to light a few candles, clean up, and just start setting things out. I am going to use this, I'm thinking, and I'm going to put goodies so everybody can just grab a serving for the kids I thought I can minimize waste on, by using these. These are from Dollar Tree. Okay, bud. And then also, I thought I'll set these out for treats. They're pretty festive. And I can use so the green crackers on this or cookies. So I have cookies already. <laughs> made and this is another trip tip I love making those peanut butter blossoms which have the kisses on top and after a while the chocolate is still pretty soft and so having some of those plastic Tupperware big ones just allows you to put them in there without setting them on top of each other and pushing the chocolate down so I just have a few sitting up there and so I'll sprinkle those on a cook on a cake stand and then that will be like a little treat um and then for the goodies i thought i would have i have chocolate chips i have marshmallows peppermints so i'll crush some and then add also set them out whole i have spice drops i have kisses i have peppermints okay hold on and i have graham crackers so i'm gonna go ahead and set all of this out and I have cake icing, and I was thinking I'll actually just try and make some royal frosting. So making an invitation was just one way to kind of elevate the party festivities. And so you could do it really quickly, and it's, I mean, it's free. And then I just sent it through my phone so that people had a little invite for our holiday party. I also have a little coffee bar set up there.